Let me tell you why I never talk to people at car shows or events, right? It's because I know that if I go like mingle around and, and just, you know, yap with people, somebody is eventually going to come to me and say, yeah, I have a 600 Holly and I jetted it up to a 750 double pumper, right? It, it happens like every time and like my inner world goes black and I, and I just, I just, I know how badly we need the giant asteroid to come and just snuff out life on this fucking planet, right? So for you guys that are new to this, no, jetting has nothing to do with the size of the carburetor. CFM and jetting are two completely mutually exclusive things. But we're going to talk about jetting in this particular thing because we, we've been going through all of the circuitry. We did the, the, you know, the idle circuitry and the cruise circuitry. So now we're going to do the main circuits, which is the jets, the main jets. So let's, uh, okay. You're going to come across in the popular carburetors. We'll, we're going to stick with just the Edelbrock and the Hollies, right? But all carburetors have jets. But we'll do the Edelbrock and the Hollies because they have both both styles that you're going to come across. And uh, so the first is the Holly, right? So if we pop off this flow pole, uh, okay, and we look right here, we've got the two main jets. These are the primary jets. Now a Holly is also, depending on the style of carburetor, will either have another set of jets for the secondaries or they'll have a metering plate. But that's that's a that's a holly specific thing. We're just going to go with we're going to talk about the jets. So basically, these things are submerged at the bottom of the float pole. So they're always theoretically they've always got fuel over them, and the amount of gasoline that's allowed to be sucked through the engine through the boosters through through the you know the main circuitry of the carburetor is regulated through these jets. Now the other style that you come across, it's only slightly different. Right here, come here, look excuse the rusty interior of this carburetor, is the, the Carter Edelbrock style. And if you look down here, let me get something to point this out with. If you look down here, there's the primary jets. They feed these. And there's the secondary jets feeding these. The main difference between the Holly style and the Edelbrock style is that Holly's supplement their fuel through the power valve, which we talked about in the last installment, where Edelbrocks, Carters and Edelbrocks, use a metering rod. And the way that works is here's a, here's a main jet from, a, from a, an Edelbrock, and here's the metering rod. So at cruise, right, low RPM, the jet is, the, the metering rod is stuck deep in the jet so that the fattest part is closing off the most amount of fuel and when you hit the throttle and the rod pops up it goes to, to this smaller size and that allows more fuel to flow through. How many jets are typically two digits? So you'd have like a, a, a 70 or a 75, right? Wh whatever it happens to be. Where Carter Edelbrock jets are generally three digits. So it'd be like 104, 105, 109, right? And that's because of the differences in the way supplemental fuel is handled. Power valve doing adding the extra fuel on Holly, where the metering rod is actually entering the jet and regulating that by its by its height. So this hole has to be larger, and that's why if you talk to somebody, let's say you're running a you, you you've got an Edelbrock, and you talk to somebody who's got a Holly, and they tell you, yeah, I went from a you know this size jet to that size jet, it doesn't equate. It's not the same. Um, you have to go by the style of carburetor that you've got. Now just to add a little bit of confusion to all of this, some Hollies that were produced for production cars during the smog era have a three-digit jet. And it's actually, the third digit is just, it's like, it's, like, it's like a micromanagement thing. Just pay attention to the first two digits. Those are the ones that count. So now that you know basically what these things do, what do you do with them? What do you, you know, you tune with them. So essentially, depending on the air, depending on the altitude, depending on how well the engine breathes, or you know, either, even whether or not you've got the exhaust open or closed. Like if you open your headers, you, your, your airflow through the motor is going to increase, and so you've got to increase the fuel flow through the motor so you would jet up. If you run a, a full exhaust system, you would want to jet back down again. Um, if it's cold, there's a lot of oxygen in the air, the air is dense, you want to add more fuel, uh, so you put a bigger jet in. It's a humid, muggy night, right? You, 
not enough oxygen, so you take fuel away. And that's how you maintain the, rate, the correct ratio for your combination. Uh, now, how you go about this depends on what school you're from. Uh, newer school guys will use an air fuel ratio meter, an AFR meter. And that's a, a, a fantastic tool to use. Uh, I don't use one myself because I've been doing this for so long, I rely on my senses for jetting. I, 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 the seat of my pants, uh, the smell, uh, and plug readings. You know, I, I like to read by plugs. With the AFR meter, see that's one of the big differences. The AFR meter is a good tool for overall jetting, but because you're dealing with engines that have, like for instance on this dual quad setup, not every cylinder is, or even on a single four barrel for that matter, not every cylinder is going to get the same shot of fuel from the carburetor. So an air fuel ratio meter is a good tuning tool to give you a sense of the overall health of the engine or the overall uh, tune of the engine, but plug readings will tell you whether one cylinder is particularly lean or one cylinder is particularly fat, and so you could tune through the jets. So I mean, just for the sake of argument, let's just say I pull the plugs, this is a four barrel engine, and I pull the plugs, and this corner of the engine is running very fat, it's got extra fuel, I see black on the plugs, and this, this corner of the engine right here, I'm seeing like the porcelain is like white, it's lean. Well, I can put a larger jet in the, in the, in the, the corner of the carburetor closest to that, and it'll fatten that up, and I can put a smaller jet here, and it'll lean that down. And so you can balance by reading the plugs better than you can an air fuel ratio meter. But that's not to say don't get one or don't learn how to use it, don't put one in your car. They're good tools to have. Uh, but it's not the end all of, of carburetor jetting, right? You really want to have, and the next installment we're going to do just that. We're going to do, we're going to do how to read plugs. Now in my opinion, one of the big advantages that the Carter Edelbrock Holly has in a street strip type of car, meaning like something that requires less than 800 CFM, is the fact that on a Holly, if you want to make any small jet changes, you literally have to take the flow pole off. It can be messy, right? You've got to take the ball off and you've got to, you know, dig into the jets. Now, if you, when you, you do this, obviously all the gasoline inside, you know, pours out. One of the tricks is keep a, a, a cap, like, a, like a, a, a spray paint can cap handy and take one of these corner bolts out first and let the gasoline drain out of the bowl into that cap before you take the, the, the actual flow pole off. But like I said, in order to make a, even a smallest change on a holly, you've got to take this apart. Where on the Carter Edelbrock style, as well as like you know, Rochester's and whatnot, you can make that same jet change just by changing one of these, the, the meter, changing one or both of the metering rods. You know, a, a, a thicker rod will lean out the mixture and a thinner rod will fatten up the mixture. So a, a jet change or a, a minor jet change, like the type that you would find, let's say you go to the track uh, and the air changes, you know, the, the temperature drops like 20 degrees from the time you're making your time shots to the time you're actually making runs later in the night. Well, you can usually compensate with just a simple jet change. It takes less than a minute and no gasoline, no mess, no nothing. So that's why on, on street cars, I definitely prefer the Edelbrock style. So uh, I think that's it for now. You got a general idea how this stuff works, and I'll see you tomorrow.